Council. Uh, hearing none, is 29.1.1 unanimously moved and seconded? Yes. 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 All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 29.1.1 is adopted. Uh, next, there are a series of items all related to the Echo Bay project, but I, I think probably what makes most sense is for us to go directly to item 9.5, which concerns authorization of the uh, proposed land disposition agreement. Uh, this is the item that I believe Councilmember Tarantino specifically suggested uh, be placed on the agenda uh, for a vote today, and depending on how that uh, matter is disposed of, it may uh, obviate uh, our, our need to um, uh, to review and vote upon the other items. So, um, moving on to item 9.5, uh, is there a motion on item 9.5.1? This would be a resolution authorizing the execution of a land disposition agreement with Forest City Residential for the disposition and redevelopment of the city yard parcel and a portion of the armory parcel at Echo Bay. Is there a motion on 9.5.1? There is, Mayor. A move by Councilmember Tarantino. I second it. Seconded by Councilmember Trangucci. Mr. Clerk, you may call the roll on item 9.5.1. And of course, council members are free to uh, offer comments in conjunction with their votes if they wish to do so. Mr. Clerk. Sorry. Uh, Councilman Trangucci, uh, just a brief statement. Um, the original proposal for this site was uh, a 26 acre, 26 acre parcel, 750 residential, I mean, uh, uh, rental units, 100 condos and 150,000 square feet of retail, plus a hotel. This project has now become a project that's 285 units of rental. One-sixth of the retail space has been reduced to 25,000 square feet. No hotel, but there is a water park, I mean, a, uh, a park that's watering the water. Uh, the project requests and asks for substantial tax breaks, tax givebacks from the taxpayer. Um, from the original proposal and now with the, the second proposal proposal that's been presented. Uh, and I just don't feel this is appropriate for the taxpayers. I don't feel it's appropriate for the city. This is not a project that fits what I think and what the people of New Rochelle feel should be there. And with that, I vote no. Councilman Tarantino, um, I'd like to make a brief statement. Um, when this project was presented to us early in, I believe it was 2007, the MOU came forward. I was excited about the prospect of a 26-acre um, development on a waterfront. However, uh, during the process, a 26-acre site with 150,000 square feet of retail, 300 uh, hotel rooms, uh, home ownership and rentals, uh, we ended up with a 285-unit rental building, uh, basically a watered-down version of the original plan. Um, I was quite offended and I felt that I needed to do something to make sure that um, the city residents were not victims of a bait-and-switch uh, and I felt that it was important that we move forward and uh, start to maybe in the future look at the entire site. Uh, I feel very, very strongly that uh, Moving forward, we need to make sure that uh, we have uh, an understanding of what we want before we go forward, and with that, I'll vote no. Councilman Rice. just want to say that I do have some concerns with the way this whole process has played out. I don't understand how or why we got to this place today where we had a vote a few weeks ago to not discuss this LDA, and today now we're voting upon this same LDA that we were never able to discuss, and I'm disappointed for a few different reasons. One, I'm disappointed with the fact that we were never able to discuss a cost-benefit analysis as to the 16 plus million dollars that the city will be receiving. I'm disappointed in the fact that we were never able to discuss the 1.5 million dollar grant. I don't know what's going to happen with that um, once this vote is finished. I'm also disappointed with the armory parcel and the project that we have next door to the city yard. I don't know what the next step will be with that. I'm most disappointed with the fact that we never were able to discuss the issue of the city yard. Um, city Council as a whole, we have not talked about this LDA. Quite frankly, I've had more and more meaningful conversation on this topic with my friends on Facebook. And to get to this point today where we are voting on something, we're not talking about it, these very issues that concern the future of the city of New Rochelle, and especially with the city yard, because that is the critical component of this deal. In the term sheet, we have a blank date that says we have to turn over the parcel by a certain date, but we never even discussed how and when 
how much it's going to cost. I don't believe that the process that we employed was prudent in this in this matter. And because of the fact that we have not discussed or resolved this with the city yard, I have no choice but to vote no. Councilman Hyde. Um, I'd just like to say a brief uh, statement. I, I did not support the extension of the Memorandum of Understanding with Forest City back in March, and I do not agree to the terms of the LDA now. I do not believe that this project represents the best use of the largest developable parcel of city-owned waterfront and find the specifics of the LDA unacceptable. Therefore, I vote no. Councilman Fertel. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think my statement's going to be as brief as my colleagues, because I will have to say, because uh, as some people may know, I'm only one of two members of this council who sat on the city council when six years ago the decision was made that Forest City would be the developer of the Echo Bay site. Uh, after it was chosen, Forest City presented an exciting, grandiose plan to develop an area of 26 acres with a project that would have dramatically changed New Rochelle's waterfront. I was extremely disappointed when several years later, after the economy tanked, Forest City presented a substantially scaled-down project, which is far different from the vision we were presented early on. I firmly believe that the metamorphosis of the Echo Bay project, from an exciting vision of New Rochelle's waterfront, to a much smaller development is the primary reason why this project does not have strong support in my district and has ultimately failed. It's not because of tax abatements, not because it's far a city, not because it has a small number of school children, not because it is perceived to cost taxpayers, but because there's never been an adequate public explanation given as to why this project was so dramatically downsized. I understand the reasons for it, but the residents of my district believe that we could have and should do better. I have been a supporter of this project, even in the current version, because I believe that if we canceled this development, there was no certainty that the ultimate outcome would be an improvement. Indeed, public-private development projects are difficult, <coughs> arduous, and in many instances never happen. In fact, in my seven-year tenure on the City Council, there's not been a single major development which, was been, which has been initiated and is moving forward. The Count Square died. Two projects involving Church Street and Division did not go forward. One was abandoned by the developer, and the other never had the support of the majority of the city council. A recent effort to obtain development proposals for Garden Street, an area touted by many as an ideal area for development, attracted no real interest. In fact, the only proposal was residential development, which the entire city council opposed. There was no other interest for this prime location. North Avenue, which cries out for improvement, has not been developed because the majority of the council refused to adopt the zoning change which, in my view, would have encouraged development along that major artery. I understand the weaknesses and shortcomings of the Forest City proposal, but as an elected official, you have to make a judgment as to what is best, and I believe that that project did deserve to go forward. Unfortunately, two weeks ago, we had a council meeting, which, to put it nicely, was chaotic, and I think reflected poorly on what we as public officials bearing the public's trust represent. I also believe that many residents probably acted in ways that they regret, but as public officials, we are held to a higher standard and to the extent that I may have violated that standard, I apologize. Going forward, as we make choices for the future of New Rochelle, I hope that we don't make decisions affected by the fog of partisanship, personal animus, self-righteousness, hubris, or arrogance. I will try my best to use my judgment and experience to make decisions that are best for my beloved community where I raise my three sons. I beseech those of you who are opposed to this project to keep an open mind and work together to do what's best for New Rochelle, not out of spite, anger, resentment, but I have the need for us to come together and move forward. Now to the vote. Uh, I find it ironic that two weeks ago an effort was made to delay both discussion and the vote, not only the Echo Bay LDA, but also the possible relocation of the city yard to January. Last week, the advocates of the delay decided to rush into a vote on the LDA without any discussion of the city yard and its financial and other ramifications. While the movement of the city yard and the Echo Bay development are separate, they are related and in order to make a final decision on the LDA, that information should be fully vetted and discussed. Because you have not had that opportunity, and because I believe it's important to the extent possible for the council to demonstrate a consensus to the public, I vote no. Council Warren Rackham. First, I want to thank Forest City Residential Group for their efforts and cooperation with the city during the course of the public review process, including the negotiation of the LDA. I would also like to express my appreciation for the public's input and participation in this process. The disposition of public waterfront land is a serious responsibility for any council member. 
It has required me to weigh a number of policy, environmental, and economic concerns, and to determine what is in the best interest of the city of New Rochelle now and in the future. I have a number of concerns with the LDA. I do not support the waiver of the recreation fees to the city, which could total in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm skeptical that the contribution to, to reusing the Nelstadt and Mancusa Marina properties, which I do believe were an important part of the overall redevelopment, is not sufficient. I'm also concerned with the wording in the LDA that allows Forest City to transfer the pilot to an affiliate as it may not properly protect the interests of the city. Finally, I must consider the interrelationship between the city's intent to redevelop the armory parcel, the current design of the project, and its potential impact on the visual connection between downtown and the waterfront. Therefore, after careful deliberation and good faith negotiations with Forest City, I must vote no on the current resolution to approve the land disposition and development agreement. Mayor Brams, uh, council members know I, I do not typically read from a prepared statement, but I hope you'll permit me to do so tonight. And I hope you'll forgive me also if this is a somewhat longer statement than, uh, than I typically make, and also somewhat longer than I think the other statements we've heard this evening. Uh, the debate surrounding Echo Bay has been intense. At times, it's almost seemed as though the project has become a symbol of larger disputes and divisions, rather than a specific plan with specific features. So let me try to bring the discussion back to the actual proposal before us and offer three reasons why I am voting yes. Number one, plan. The proposal advances critical waterfront objections that have been important to our community for many years. It would clean up a nearly 10 acre area that is today contaminated and inaccessible and devote more than half of the land, including the entire shoreline, to public use and enjoyment, including the largest new park in New Rochelle in more than a generation. And it would also provide the energy of restaurants and retail on what is now a nearly dead portion of East Main Street. The proposal would pay for public improvements by allowing private development that is respectful of its surroundings in scale and character. This proposal is smaller than it was in 2007 because economic conditions have changed and because we have learned from experience. Nonetheless, it would create a core of successful investment that could serve as a catalyst for surrounding properties and would make it easier to achieve a larger transformation of the Echo Bay area. Number two, money. In terms of one-time impacts under this proposal, our community would receive cash payments and fees totaling about $9 million plus in-kind benefits and assets worth about $8.5 million, a total of $17.5 million. In exchange, we would transfer about two-thirds of a property that has, been that has been independently appraised at $5.7 million in its entirety. So figure about $4 million for the transferred portion. That's a net one-time benefit of $13.5 million. In terms of annual impacts under this proposal, the various taxing entities covering New Rochelle would receive about $1.5 million in taxes and payments every year, while expending about $650,000 in annual service costs for a net benefit each year of about $850,000. Over 20 years, those annual benefits, putting aside inflation and escalators, add up to about $17 million. Take the annual and one-time benefits, put them together, and the total value of this proposal for taxpayers is a little over $30 million, and after 20 years, even more. Our own independent expert analysis concludes that this is a very good deal for taxpayers. Number three, process. The action before us now is the concluding step of a careful, methodical process aimed at first defining and then achieving our own community's goals. When it comes to big decisions, this sort of orderly, step-by-step -step, uh, process is important and should be valued. About 30 years ago, the city adopted an urban renewal plan for Echo Bay. About 10 years ago, hundreds of residents participated in an open, inclusive community process to articulate specific goals. 
About seven years ago, the Council used those goals as the basis for issuing requests for development partners and then unanimously selected Forest City Residential, based primarily on Forest City's ability to stick with the site through economic ups and downs. In the time since, through two local elections and a national recession, we have slowly made progress. The developer has completed an environmental review and our staff has patiently negotiated the terms of a public-private partnership, including elements that directly respond to various community concerns and others that correct past mistakes, such as a creative and effective solution for addressing public school costs. For all of these reasons, and others I could list, I'm disappointed by the Council's vote tonight. But I respect that others have weighed the pros and cons and come to a different conclusion. And once a choice is made, it is time to move on. The challenge before us now is to apply the lessons of this experience to our next steps. So to balance out my three explanations for past support, let me make three suggestions for future action. First, let's conduct every public debate as though our children were watching. Any significant development, for that matter, any significant public action, brings with it the potential for controversy. So we should expect and welcome honest disagreements. But how we express those disagreements sends a message to the larger world, including potential investors, about who we are and how we work. Especially when it comes to big choices, we should demonstrate the civility, professionalism, commitment to truth, and mutual respect of which we are all capable and which put New Rochelle's best foot forward. Second, let us set the right balance between vision and realism. This requires us to walk a path with a pitfall on each side. One pitfall is low expectations, accepting less than we could achieve with greater effort. For any major development, we should ask whether it truly advances our community's essential interests, whether it truly makes New Rochelle a better place, and whether it truly surpasses other available opportunities. Only developments that meet each of these tests are worthy of our support. The other pitfall is wishful thinking, allowing the perfect to be the enemy of the good. If we wait for an ideal project, the chances are that we will wait forever. And insisting on just exactly the right form of change, with no trade-offs or compromises, succeeds only in cementing the status quo. The test in the end is what we actually accomplish. Lastly, and my prior two pieces of advice could apply to the council and the community, but this last piece is really for the council alone. Let us prove worthy of trust. The trust of the people we represent, which we earn through openness to criticism, sharing of information, good judgment, and a commitment to our responsibilities. <clears throat> the trust of our partners in business, which is vital to New Rochelle's investment climate and to our hopes for a stronger economy. The trust of each other, which is the essential basis for compromise, for negotiation, and for our ability to work together and plan ahead. We should make our commitments carefully and then honor those commitments to the very best of our ability. To conclude, I've had my chance to advance a proposal, and I accept the fact that my suggestion did not carry the day. I think it's only right that I now give colleagues who had a different view on this issue their chance to put forward specific alternatives and to recommend the next course of action for Echo Bay and the City Yard. I'm looking forward to hearing your suggestions and priorities so that we can make the most of the opportunities before us. Thank you all for listening, and again, I vote yes. Mr. Clerk, there's no further legislative item before the Council at this time, and therefore we will take a brief recess and then reconvene in a couple of minutes in the uh, City Council conference room so that we can proceed to discussion and further consideration of the city manager's proposed budget for 2014.
Uh, those who wish to stay for that discussion are welcome to do so. Those who would like to excuse themselves may, uh, may of course, go home or go wherever else you'd like to go at this time. Thank you very much. Is the clerk going to announce the results? Oh, yes, right. Well, that's what I need, my money shot. I need the actual... <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I'll announce it in there. You have to go in there. Uh, ...together and hold, hold tight. Mm -hmm. Just let everybody else fall by the wayside. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not really the way you legislate. You need to either convince me or the old members that don't agree with you that you're right and they're wrong, or... Uh, you know, work with us in some way so that we can at least have a, a feeling of being part of the process. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you have ideas at this point for what can happen? Well, I'm excited to look forward after, I'm sure January we'll start the process again, and I, I have ideas, and I know other members have ideas, and I think that what we're going to do is we're going to put our heads together and try to work as a, as a team, a seven-member team, to come up with something that will work and, and is viable uh, and could be a, something that the residents of the city should be proud of. Nice meeting you, finally. Okay. Thanks, Al. You're welcome. Can I grab it real quick? Yeah. Yeah. Hello again, how are you? Hi, how are you? Yeah, it looks like you had more than enough. Last week, you were feeling pretty confident about this uh, vote coming up this week. Uh, what are your uh, comments on what happened with Downton Abbey? No, I'm happy that I got support. We got support from council that this uh, project go away. Um, Forest City has been a company that seek a tremendous amount of tax breaks. Uh, it's really not much give back as far as revenue. And because of that, uh, the project is purely a residential unit uh, development as opposed to bringing in some substantial retail. And what residents in our city need now is retail. And that's what we need to focus on. And especially the fact that this project went from 150,000 square feet to 25,000 square feet, which is one-sixth the size of what they originally proposed, is not what the city needs. It's not what the city wants is not the residents want. And I represent the residents, and I had to support not supporting this project. So, I had to support the residents. Now, Mayor Graham Santiano said um, that he's willing to listen to uh, other proposals. Is there anything in mind that you have going forward that uh, may uh, take over the FOB area? Uh, retail, retail, retail. Thank you. <laughs> take some chances. All right, congratulations. And I do, I do understand that people are uh, a little concerned that we might not be able to get another project in the near future, but based on the response we've had from the proposals uh, on the armory side going forward, there were 28 proposals that came through recently. We've, we've whittled it down to four. Three of them are spectacular. And I really do feel the economy is changing. I do feel banks are uh, lending more money. I have friends who are developers who are saying that the times are changing. Uh, and that combined with the fact that there is definitely interest in the waterfront with the armory proposals, I, I really do think we're going to get a, a better proposal going forward. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, and uh, this is Jeffrey Hasty, United Citizens for Better New Rochelle, and Mr. Hasty, you just saw the vote. Uh, the LDA was not approved. The Echo Bay deal is uh, dead. Do you have any comment? Uh, well, I think it's a good day for the citizens of New Rochelle. The deal was, uh, as you know, we did not support it at all. We thought, despite some of the comments that folks said here, economically it just was not viable. Um, the statement that the mayor made still, still think like, lacks a real understanding of basic finance. Um, but we prevailed nonetheless, even without uh, without his support. Um, so now the tough work becomes, which is really sitting down and partnering with the city council. And I'm, I'm willing to take the challenge that, that Mayor Ramsey gave us at the end. So let's give some kind of proposals. You know, we've got people in the city that are interested in participating and want to make sure that the city is what it needs to be, um, but it can't be with what the proposal that Forest City had. It needs to be something that is um, revenue generating, um, and that's something that you know. Everything we hear when we go around the city, the folks need some place to shop in New Rochelle, and they don't have that now. So we really need to start focusing on that, and then focusing on the real downtown. Echo Bay was not the real downtown. There's a lot that needs to be done on Main Street between North Avenue and Center Street. So let's start focusing on there and we get that action going. Okay. Good. Thanks. Uh, okay, and we're here with Ron Tochi, a concerned citizen who's been very involved in the Echo Bay and Armory issues over the past number of years. Mr. Tochi, you just saw a uh, key vote fail. The deal with Echo Bay and Four City is now dead. Do you have any comments? 
Well, obviously pleased with the vote, and first of all, I'd like to uh, thank the majority of the council that uh, finally realized that this was an ill-conceived plan, and uh, at least the majority did listen, so uh, we're happy about that. But I also uh, want to give credit to uh, a diverse group of citizens that came together uh, throughout the city that uh, really made the case loud and clear uh, that this was just not what they wanted, what they deserved, and uh, it just didn't make sense. So it just goes to show that you can beat City Hall sometime. Aside from that, uh, we're looking forward to the opportunity to present new ideas that would be uh, probably more exciting. And uh, I'm hopeful that uh, if uh, the council continues to listen to the people that have been involved, uh, we'll come up with something that we'll all be very, very proud of. Okay, do a little intro, okay? This is uh, Peter Prente from the United Veterans and the Saver Armory Committee. He was very involved in the effort to defeat the Echo Bay Project and generate new ideas for an adaptive reuse, reuse of the armory. Mr. Prente, you just saw the vote on the land disposition agreement, effectively killing the Echo Bay deal. Do you have any comment? Uh, it's an historic day, an historic moment in Nourish Shell. Uh, I think it's finally a time that um, the council, after many, many years, have finally given us some credit for paying attention to things that we've had to say. And uh, we've been at this for a very long time, uh, the Save the Armory group, the United Veterans of New Rochelle. And uh, it's only now, in the last several weeks, if not the uh, last several months, if not the last several weeks, that we have finally feel like we have been heard. And um, common sense is prevailing. And this is something that we've seen for years and years and years now. And it take it taken, you know, elected officials, very smart people. I take nothing away from them, but it has taken them this long to uh, come to the same conclusion that we've come to uh, six, seven years ago. But I do uh, commend them for that. I'm not uh, uh, trying to put them down, and I appreciate them coming around. It's tough to uh, change your mind um, when you're set in stone, and uh, we think that they did. And uh, but we fought a very good fight. Um, we had very charismatic, charismatic people and very smart, intelligent people that have brought different information to the podium that you see behind me, and uh, we, uh, we prevailed. And I think that uh, it's very good that we prevailed. But the one thing that I, I absolutely love about this, besides Forest City not getting uh, to, their way, to do their way with Nourishell, is that Nourishell is united. And that is an unbelievable achievement, something that I don't know if anyone could have ever done that, and Mayor Bramson did that. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Bye-bye.